Hello, and this is Goodway Sonar Academy team. Welcome to Goodway PV Solutions introduction. Uh, we are on day two. Uh, so the schedule for today is, first of all, we're gonna introduce Goodway Energy Storage Solution. And then we will have residential solution introduction. Uh, the first speaker is uh, our senior engineer from Goodway Sonar Academy, Mr. Jack Song. So, Jack, uh, Jack is right here with us. Jack, it's your time. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Jack from Goodway Sonar Academy, and uh, this uh, today I will share you, uh, share you some information about the Goodway um, energy storage solutions. Okay, all right. Okay, um, I think most of our, our, our customers know that Goodway uh, for energy storage systems, they focus on uh, um, residential uh, energy storage system. Okay, but for now we also have uh, a, a commercial CNI uh, energy storage system and it will come over uh, very soon. And uh, in the last year, in the last one year, we have a lot of updates and improvement about our inverters and also our uh, end storage solutions. Okay, so from here, I just uh, take some time to talk about uh, the solutions. Uh, the first, we will have uh, our overview about our all main inverters, main uh, end storage inverters. Okay, uh, about a good way, end storage inverters, we have uh, generally two types, two groups. Okay, the first group we call it hybrid. Okay. From this patch, you can see um, uh, all of the uh, so energy storage inverters, the, the main products we have now, and uh, it's on sale. Okay, for energy storage, uh, it means um, you know the DC DC module and the MPP module, uh, backup module bypass, and also connected to on grids, all the functions together in the same unit. And from the model names, you know, because good, we have a lot of uh, energy storage inverters and they have a different, with different models, model names. So from the model names, how we can, you know, tell it is a hybrid or it is other type, okay. Uh, I just talk about, we have a, a, one type we call it hybrid and another type is AC coupled. Okay. AC coupled, it means it's used with on-grid inverters, on-grid uh, solar systems. It's not just used alone. Okay, because uh, for AC retrofit inverters, it cannot connect the PV. It cannot, cannot connect solar. Okay, so he has to use these PV uh, solar systems. Okay, from the model names, you say, uh, you say we, get, we have ESEM, EH, ET, ESA, SBP, BH, and BT. Also, we have uh, you know, other products for, for commercial and new products that I will talk. And from the model names, if the model name start from E, like ES, EM, EH, ET, or ESA. Okay, this is, uh, means this motor is a solution for hybrid, hybrid systems, hybrid and, and storage systems. And if in the model name there is a B, like SBP, BH, and BT, okay, this is we call is coupled. Okay, like I said, is coupled is used uh, with, uh, uh, together with the on grid uh, solar systems, it's not used alone, all right? Okay, so we have a lot of different types of hybrid motors. So what is the difference about all the uh, hybrid motors? Okay, uh, about residential hybrid motors, we have the capacity from three kilowatts to 10 kilowatts the max. And uh, uh, we have a solution for single phase grids and also three phase grids. And uh, in the short future, we will have uh, uh, U.S. Uh, uh, version. It means the the the, the uh, hybrid motors for uh, American market. This is for th split phase. So for now we have uh, for single phase, for three phase, and for th uh, split phase. All the types we have for for uh, residential energy storage systems. Um, uh, another difference is about the battery a compatible battery. Compared to battery for now in the market, we have two different types. Generally have two different types. Okay, it's not uh, lithium or lead acid. Uh, here, we only talk about lithium batteries because for our um, hybrid inverters, we are only compatible with uh, lithium batteries with BMS control uh, system. It's, it's not compatible with uh, lead acid batteries for now. 
for lithium batteries, uh, you know, normally for the voltage of the batteries, they have two types. The first we call it low voltage, another is high voltage, but uh, high, high high voltage battery. Uh, for low voltage battery, it means the voltage of the battery is 48 volts. It is, this is what we call it. the uh, nominal voltage of the, of the battery is 48 volts. This is what we call the low voltage battery. And another type is high voltage battery. High voltage battery uh, is not a, a, no, a nominal voltage, not, not a fixed nominal voltage of the battery. It's a, a voltage range. Okay. Um, for example, for EH, okay, EH uh, is compatible with uh, uh, the battery voltage from 85 volts to 450 volts. But for ET and BT, it's compatible with uh, 180 volts to 600 volts. But this is, so this is a range. But normally, normally for high voltage batteries, the voltage is from 80 volts to max for now, as I know, is 1,000 volts. Okay. And uh, another type is AC retrofit. AC retrofit, like I said, is uh, used together with the uh, on-grid solar systems. It cannot be used alone because it cannot connect solar PV onto the AC motor, okay? So for AC retrofit motors, we also have solutions for single-phase grid and three-phase grid, okay? And, and, and it's the same with the hybrids. We uh, have the compatibility with the low voltage battery option and high voltage voltage uh, uh, battery options. Like SBP, BH, this is a single phase. And the BT is a three phase, okay? For AC retrofit, what we provide is from one kilowatts to uh, 10 kilowatts of the max for residential solution, okay? And uh, um, for battery voltage, SBP is a low voltage battery, used to low voltage battery. Okay, the low voltage I said is the 48 volts. And BH, B, BT is used with high voltage battery. Okay, high voltage battery for BT is used uh, uh, from 100, 180 volts to 600 volts. For BH is from 85 volts to 400, uh, 450 volts. Okay, this is the difference. And this uh, page talks about the uh, general picture of our any storage solutions. Okay. This now it's, it's it's not a kind of solution. It's, uh, it's just uh, in words here about the detailed solutions uh, we talk about in the following pages, right? And this is all about the residential solutions and in words. Uh, and uh, for now, we also have uh, the uh, solutions for any for. Uh, um, commercial projects, MCNI projects, and uh, this product will come out very soon. And in, in just uh, one month, we will have this one. Then, or two months, we will have the first uh, 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 commercial uh, uh, energy storage solution. Okay. And uh, this one is uh, uh, a new one. This is this uh, energy storage solution is a new one, totally new one, and. Uh, uh, I said it is upcoming. It means it's not finished, totally finished yet. And but this will finish in two in two, two months. In two months, we will have this version. This version is single phase, and the capacity is from five to ten kilowatts. Single phase from five to ten kilowatts is hybrid. Okay, so this is uh, the like I said, this is the first uh, uh, um, single phase with ten with uh, up to ten kilowatts in. Uh, in China, manufacturers also are, are around the world. It is the first uh, uh, type with uh, so high uh, capacity with single phase of single phase. Okay, and uh, for this one, they have uh, um, they have uh, uh, two MPPT or have three or have four because this depends on the capacity of the motor, right? And uh, this optional uh, uh, function, the PV arc protection. Of course, you can choose to have that or not. And uh, they have a battery re reserved function. Battery reserved uh, uh, production is not just for this unit. For our three-phase hybrid motors and uh, acid retrofitting motors, they all have this uh, function. Okay. <clears throat> okay, and this one is also used high voltage battery. It's from 80 uh, volts to um, four, 495 volts. And for this motor, another difference from other uh, energy storage motors is they have a BOS box here. 
the BOS box, it means inside they have wirings, the pre preset wirings, okay, about uh, the backup, about uh, on grids, and some protections, fuse protection, some, uh, you know, a lot of protections inside. Okay. Also, if you choose arc protection, they also realized on this box. Okay. And uh, on this box, we will have um, a set of breakers outside. So it means it's easier to, talk, to, to operate, to close this motor or to open this motor. You know? It's uh, like this, to have a PV, uh, PV disconnector isolator. And uh, this part is for battery and uh, for on-grid and backup. And also uh, for this brick set, we also have another new option. The new option is bypass. Bypass, we don't have detailed information on the page, but I can talk here. For bypass, it means it can switch the um, backup supply to on-grid supply. It means in sometimes if the if the unit the inverter unit fails, you want to turn off this unit to to do maintenance. But you you don't want to stop backup supply because normally on the backup side you connect uh, uh, a lot of uh, important load, right? You don't you don't you don't want to stop supply, okay? So if you need to stop the inverter, okay, you need to turn off the inverter, but you don't want to stop uh, uh, backup supply, you can use the bypass switch to switch the backup supply to on-grid supply, to grid supply, then you can close the inverter. Then you to do maintenance. After you finish the maintenance and the inverter is normal, you can switch it back, okay? And uh, from here, it's uh, the topic of the logic of the, our hybrid inverter and SD retrofit inverters, okay? Actually, for the uh, operation logic of uh, energy storage systems, it's uh, very uh, flexible, okay? Because we have uh, an application to do, to do the commissioning of the system. You, know, you can choose the um, uh, different logic you want, operation logic you want, and also uh, you can choose uh, some, uh, uh, some, some, some settings, you know, to self-define, kind of self-define uh, operation logics, okay? But for, the hybrid systems, we have uh, basic logics. Okay, basic logics, it means the default logics. You don't want, if you don't change any uh, advanced settings about this motor, about this system, okay. For the default logics, they have two, they have two uh, uh, quarters. Uh, the first is if PV power is enough. Okay, if the, you know, during the sun, the sunshine is very well, and uh, PV power is very enough. Um, then the, the PV power will supply loads first. You now for the motors, hybrid motors or AC retrofit, uh, retrofitting motors in the system, we have two different loads. The first load is connected on grid side. It's kind of paralleled with the, the, with the motor. Okay. Another um, load is on the backup side. Backup side, it means the, um, we call it UPS loads or you can use it backup, uh, call it backup loads or important loads, okay? <clears throat> there are two loads here, and if PV power is enough, they will support loads first, and these two loads, no priority, no priority. They will support two loads together at the same time, okay? If uh, they have, still have enough power, it means the load power is lower than PV power, then the rest of the PV power will charge battery. If you, they will support load first, then charge the battery. And if a battery charge cannot, after battery charge, they still have exit power. They can choose to exit to grid, exit to grid, okay, export to grid. But you, know, you can choose to export to grid or you can limit power to uh, avoid exporting. Okay. And all the logics is realized by the smart meter. The smart meter is a default components for all our hybrid inverters and also AC retrofit inverters. So you don't have to uh, buy it separately. <coughs> so in this system, this is the first logic. If the PV power is enough, okay, then we uh, support load first, then charge the battery, and if you have excess power, they will export to grids, and you can, but you can limit that, uh, limit the power exporting, all right? This is the first uh, basic logic. Um, another basic logic, also another default logic, if load power is big, if load power is higher than PV power, 
So how they consume the power from this system, okay? The first consumption is, of course, it's from PV because PV power is, uh, you know, uh, kind of redundant, you know, you cannot control that sometimes. So if you don't use that, it's a, it's a waste, right? So if load power is very big, then they will consume uh, power from PV. If PV power is enough, then everything fine. If uh, PV power is not enough, the rest power we use take first from battery. Then if battery and PV power together cannot uh, uh, support all the loads, then the rest power will come from grids. Okay, so the priority is uh, the, the consumption priority, okay, is from PV first, then from battery, then from grids. So this default logic is to make sure to use the power from a grid as less as possible. We don't use, uh, because for any story in motors, you know, you use battery because you want to use, uh, you know, um, uh, new energy, uh, renewable energy power, but not uh, from grids, right? Sometimes the grids power electricity cost is very high, right? A lot of, uh, a lot of reasons, right? Like I said, all the uh, default logics realized by the smart meter, so smart meter, it's a, a composite part of the whole systems. You have to install this one. But uh, for every motors, we have a test one. You don't have to worry about that. And the installation is very easy. Later, we'll talk about the installations, right? And uh, another one is uh, if the grid fails, okay, the, uh, we call it, we call it off-grid modes. Off-grid modes, it means sometimes the grid is not stable. The, uh, uh, the public uh, utility is not stable and sometimes it's shut down, right? If it's shut down, then the inverter will not shut down. It's not just like, it's not like angry inverters. For angry inverters, if the grid shut down and then the whole system shut down, right? So then the PV power is vast. It's a waste, right? Uh, it's a waste uh, uh, for the whole systems, right? For investment. And, but for hybrid inverters, if the grid shut down, if the grid f fails, okay, during off, uh, outage, the inverter will not, uh, uh, will not stop and they will continue to supply backup loads and uh, the battery and PV power are still working. They can use to, to supply backup loads, okay. Uh, but uh, during grid outage, the loads, on the grid side cannot be activated because it's connected on the grid side and the inverter have to uh, protect from, the, uh, from exporting to grids, right? If the grid fails, uh, all the inverters have uh, a function, production function is called anti-aligning. It means that we disconnect it from the grid side, okay? But uh, the backup side still have a power supply, okay? So this is the, uh, the off-grid condition uh, we still have a uh, power supply. And uh, the switch from on grid to off grid, okay, the switch time is 10 milliseconds. It means uh, the switch from the grid supply to PV supply or battery supply, the switch time is less than 10 milliseconds. It means on the backup sides, loads can be supplied and interrupt, interruptly, and, and, uh, not interruptly, okay. Um, so this is a, what we call the UPS level switch, switch time, right? And uh, another one, this uh, the best logic about uh, hybrid motors, we hybrid system we have talked, and this type is uh, AC retrofit. AC retrofit, I said, is used with on-grid systems. Okay, it's not used alone. But uh, AC retrofit in motors with on-grid systems, the best logic is the same actually. If the grid is normal, if the grid is uh, uh, is normal, uh, the logic is exactly the same with hybrid motors. The solar from on-grid motors, the power will supply to loads, backup loads or on-grid loads together, no priority. And if you have uh, enough power, they will charge the battery, and then they can export the grid if uh, you know they still have exit power. Um, but uh, for AC retrofit, for AC retrofit, there's uh, one thing is very different from hybrid is if the grid fails, okay, 
you know, for ongoing waters, if the grid fails like that, ongoing waters will totally shut down. They cannot work. Okay, so if the grid shut down, the ongoing in water shut down, also shut down, then the PV cannot be activated. So the PV is useless if the grid shut down. So for AC retrofit system, if the grid shut down, only battery and a backup is activated. Okay, so this is the difference from hybrid inverters, right? But for AC retrofit inverters, normally it's used uh, in some place, um, you know, a, for example, in your house, you have installed on green borders just a few years ago. But for now, you wanted to update, upgrade uh, this system, your solar system, to hybrid or to energy storage in water, uh, energy storage systems. Then you can use AC retrofit in water to um, you know, add, add uh, you can add uh, AC retrofit in water into this system. Then all the systems could be, uh, uh, could be energy storage, right? And uh, for AC retrofit inverters, we have like uh, in the first page we have talked. We have uh, uh, single phase and three phase. Okay, for no matter for single phase or three phase, okay, you can use with on-grid inverters with uh, single or three phase. There's no no problem. And another thing is for the on-grid systems, on-grid solar systems. Okay, here we put it a uh, solar systems. Actually, it's not just a solar system. Okay. You can, it can use with the uh, uh, solar system, wind generator, everything, everything, because it's covered on the AC side. Okay, they don't have to communicate with in water. So they can, uh, no matter what is the power from here, you can use it with, uh, uh, AC, uh, with AC retrofit, right? And for, if you use a solar in water or a wind generator, another thing is, is it doesn't matter which brand, which brand of the in water it is, okay? You can use SMA, you can use the News, you can use SunGrove, you can use Goodway, you can use uh, you know, all the brands together with our AC coupled inverters. Okay, and uh, all, uh, in the same, the basic logic of uh, AC retrofit systems is all controlled by uh, the smart meter. Okay, uh, but here you can see the smart meter is different from that, uh, uh, from that for uh, hybrid uh, inverters, right? Because for uh, this one, this smart meter, they have two cities. They have two cities. And so this city is the same function with that uh, on energy storage for uh, on hybrid energy storage system. But uh, for this city, it's a different use. This city is used to detect the production about the PV system, about the on-grid systems. Because you know, if we don't have this city, we don't have city two, it means we cannot detect the PV production. Then in the monitoring, we cannot tell how much the PV, the solar produced. And we cannot tell you what is the power of, the, of your house load, right? So that's why for AC retrofitting motors, uh, we, have, uh, two, we have a smart meter with two CDs. When CD is detected the PV production, then we can have a, a whole picture about the whole system monitoring, right? <clears throat> Okay, this, uh, this one is uh, another solution. Another solution is about uh, a paralleling solution. Okay. For paralleling solutions, this is uh, realized only for three-phase hybrid motor. Okay, it means only for ET series. For a single phase, for uh, AC retrofit, it's not able to do the paralleling. For now, it's not to do. Uh, it's not. It's not be able to 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 do the parallel But in future, we will develop that function. <clears throat> okay. So here we focus on ET series. ET series act we talked is a three phase hybrid inverter. Okay, use a high voltage battery from five to ten kilowatts. And uh, in the uh, paralleling system, you have to use uh, SEC one thousand S. This uh, unit is used to communicate with all the inverters and to combine all the inverters together, you know, to coordinate all the inverters uh, operation, op operations, right? And another thing is uh, you, should, uh, you should be uh, <coughs> careful about the paralleling. The first is it can parallel up to 100 kilowatts. It means because ET, the max is 10 kilowatts, all right? So, uh, 
it means max uh, max one hundred kilowatts. It means in the parallel systems, okay, you can uh, connect max up to ten pieces of uh, of ET in motors in parallel, okay. And uh, another another is unbalanced output. Unbalanced output. I'm not sure if the, if it's important in uh, uh, Sri Lanka or not. Or not. But uh, in some countries, it's very important. It means uh, um, the unbalanced output. It means uh, uh, the um, for all the three phases output on each phase, they can output different power. Okay, this is what we call the unbalanced output. For unbalanced, unbalanced functions, uh, in the following pages, I have a detailed uh, talking, detailed introduction. Okay, and as a smart control, smart control. <laughs> Uh, for smart control, uh, it's about the parallel and operation logics. Okay, here it, it, this is a, a bit complicated. I cannot talk here uh, by the pictures. Okay, this is a bit complicated. So if you want to know the details, you can contact Goodry Technical uh, Solar Academy to get this document, or you can ask some questions to know all the uh, operation logics of the uh, of, of of the uh, general paralleling system. Okay. And uh, another thing you should, uh, you should keep in your mind, for the paralleling system, it's a parallel on the grid side, okay, only grid side, not backup, not the battery. So it means for ET, uh, for ET paralleling system, you cannot paralleling backup together. You cannot paralleling battery together, okay. From the, 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 the diagram, you can also see that the backup of, of each motor, it's uh, connected separately. And also the battery. Okay, so this is uh, the thing uh, for ET series paralleling. Okay. Um, another solution is uh, what we call is the capacity extension. Um, capacity expansion. Uh, what it means? It means hybrid inverters used together with ongoing inverters. Okay, like in the first in in the previous page, I have talked. Our AC retrofit inverters is used with on-grid systems, right? It's used with on-grid inverters to uh, to make sure the whole uh, energy storage system is, uh, uh, is is you know makes sense. Um, because for AC retrofit inverters, they cannot connect solar, but for hybrid inverters, they can connect solar onto it onto it, right? But uh, it can also use as AC retrofit. So it means that for hybrid inverters, they have a hybrid function, they have also its retrofit functions, okay? So uh, in this system, what is the advantage of, about this system? Uh, like uh, in AC retrofit systems, if the grid fails, the whole on-grid systems shut down. So there's no PV if the grid fails for AC retrofit system, right? But for hybrids in water with on-grid systems, if the grid fails, the solar connected on-grid motors is fails. They cannot shut down. They cannot uh, active, cannot be activated, but the solar connected on hybrid water they can still working. They can still uh, they can still work. Okay, so this is this is uh, the advantages. And also another thing is if, for example, you have uh, installed five kilowatts in your house, the on-grid system, on-grid solar system, but for now you want to update the system to energy storage. But five, five kilowatts energy storage is not enough for you. You want to update the system to 10 kilowatts energy storage. So if you use, you use AC retrofit, okay, you cannot extend the PV system because uh, AC retrofit cannot connect the PV system, right? So if you want update five kilowatts on grid system to 10 kilowatts energy storage system, you can use five, another five kilowatts hybrid motor. Then on hybrid motors, you can extend the PV system, another five kilowatts PV system. So this is, this is what we call capacity extension solution, okay. Uh, okay, the, 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 the capacity extension solution is the same, the logic is the same with uh, as retrofit and hybrid motors, okay. The PV from on-grid motors or from the hybrid, hybrid systems, they can all charge the battery, they can all support all the loads together. Okay, and now in the monitoring, they will calculate the total power from the two PVs. Okay, this is not separate. 
<coughs> okay, another solution. This is uh, also kind of a new solution. <coughs> we call it uh, battery ready. Battery ready solution, it means, uh, generally speaking, it means um, um, you can buy uh, normal on green water. And then in the, in the future, if you want to update the system to energy storage, you can use the same unit to connect it to the battery. Okay, you don't have to buy another AC retrofit. This is what, call, what we call a um, battery ready function. Okay, but a battery a battery ready function uh, solution um, is only realized on our EH series. EH only on EH series. Okay, for EH we have uh, three uh, options. Okay, before we talk about uh, talk about the options, uh, we just have a, a, a overview about uh, the EH. Now, for EH, like I said, it's a single phase hybrid motor, right? Single phase hybrid motor with high voltage batteries, okay? But uh, for EH motors, we have a different order purchase option. The first is with, with you know, hybrid option. We call it hybrid option, the first. The first hybrid option, it means uh, they have a battery function, they have a smart meter in the, in the component, components box, and the whole system working is uh, the same with uh, normal hybrid inverters, normal hybrid systems. Another, uh, another option is um, uh, without battery function. It means this inverter, they have the connection port. They have the connection interface with the battery, but you cannot use that uh, because it's not activated. They just have an interface reserved for battery ready. But uh, we, we, without battery fun function, you can still use smart meter. Why? Because uh, you use smart meter, you can do zero export function, export power limit function, okay? Another option is uh, uh, the normal on-green border without a battery function, without smart meter. It's the, it is a, a normal on-green borders, okay? It's just like it show up here, okay? This is the... Uh, EH water uh, without battery function, without a smart meter, okay. But uh, this is also a, a small different from on-green motors. You know, for EH motors, if uh, you buy battery ready function, battery ready option, there's no battery, uh, no battery uh, um, function, you cannot connect the battery, there's no smart meter to control all the systems, but uh, the backup supply is still there. It means if the grid fails, but there is still PV power, then the systems can still working, can still work. Okay, this, this is the difference from uh, normal uh, on green waters. Okay, so in the future, if you want to uh, buy uh, lithium batteries to connect uh, uh, to the water and to update the whole systems from battery ready to any storage system, you need also an activation code from Goodway. You should purchase this. Uh, uh, this activation code, okay. By this activa act activation code, then uh, to update the, this in water, then the battery interface will be activated. Then you can connect the battery here. And also, if you use battery, you have to use a smart meter in the system. Because in these three op options, you can use smart meter, you can choose to have smart meter or no smart meter. If you, uh, if you buy battery ready functions, right? If you buy a smart meter before with the inverter, then you don't have to buy another. You, have, you don't have to buy another smart meter. Only one smart meter is, is enough. But if you didn't buy smart meter before, then you want to activate the battery function, then you have to purchase another smart meter together with uh, the activation code. So this is uh, the this all, this solution we talked. We call it a battery ready. <clears throat> Another solution we call it all in one solution. All in one solution. It means we put in water, we put uh, the uh, wiring box, we put uh, the battery together in the same cabinet. Okay, you don't have to purchase separately about the breakers or about uh, you know, about the batteries about everything. You don't have to purchase separately. For all-in-one solution, we call it, we call it ESA, it's a cabinet, okay? Uh, in this part, the first part is uh, a five kilowatt hybrid motors. 
Okay, only option is five kilowatts. Okay, is the only option. And this part is a pre-wired box. Pre-wired box in inside we have uh, uh, um, the uh, breakers, uh, AC breakers, DC breakers, all inside, and also the communication modules also installed inside. Okay, all the wires is prepared here. You you don't have to uh, purchase another switch, another isolators if you don't want. Okay. <clears throat> And this part is the battery. The battery, uh, the option is from, um, it's all li uh, lithium battery, and the option is from 5.4 kilowatts to 9.8 kilowatts. This is the two options, yeah. And this battery, for now, we, it, we use our own battery. It means uh, the, this, this battery here is produced from Goodry. And uh, <clears throat> the test, uh, the competitive compatibility test and the uh, you know uh, um, operation test is much better because the, all the battery and the motor is from Goodway, right? Okay. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. And uh, in this system, in all in one system, after you uh, finish it, the wiring, because we have a pre-wired box, you don't have to pre uh, you you can save a lot of time for the wirings, but you still have to connect uh, the cable to the PV, right? You have to connect the uh, cable to external smart meter or CT, okay? But the cables, we have prepared a, a, a cable slot in this unit. So it, it means after you finish the wiring from the uh, front side, you cannot see any cable, any connectors. Okay, so this is uh, much beautiful for house use, actually. It's like a, a cabinet like a, a cabinet, like a furniture, normal house furniture. Right. Oh, sorry. Another thing is in this, in this one, in this unit, uh, in the prepared box, we, we also have a bypass switch. Okay, bypass switch, like I said, <clears throat> you can switch the uh, backup supply to ungrid supply. Uh, okay, if you wanted to do maintenance of, of the inverters, you can switch uh, from the backup loads to ungrid supply just in case they have uh, interrupted the power supply on the backup sides, okay, on the, on the backup loads, right? <clears throat> and all the whole, the whole unit is, uh, the general uh, uh, production is IB4054. Uh, uh, so it means it can, it, it can be used uh, outdoors. Okay, you don't have to use it uh, uh, in, indoors. <clears throat> okay, uh, another solution. Another solution is uh, battery reserve reservation. It means that we have that we have the option to reserve the battery functions, battery powers, to be used uh, when you need it. <clears throat> the first option is uh, we have uh, different duty settings. Okay, the, uh, this is uh, the P master we have uh, to do the commissioning about, about the whole uh, end story system of Google. And uh, two DoD settings. <clears throat> it means that when duty is on grid duty and when is uh, off grid duty. Uh, it, 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 we can talk here. It means the uh, uh, on grid duty, it means, uh, for example, you have set it to 40, uh, uh, 60% of the battery, and off grid duty, you set it to 80%. So it means if the grid, if, if the grid is normal, the battery will only discharge 40 of its capacity even not just at all. If you reserved the rest of the power to use if the grid fails, okay, during grid outage. So uh, this is just in case uh, <clears throat> in, some, <clears throat> in some place or in some house, when the grid is normal, but the load, load, load power is very high. So the battery will discharge all his power to spot the loads and the battery cannot get a charge from the solar, right? So in this case, we have uh, these options just that in case um, if the grid fails during a uh, grid uh, outage, there's no enough power from the battery to support all the loads, okay, especially at, at night. Okay. And another option is uh, backup modes, operation modes. If you choose backup option modes, it means the battery will not discharge if the grid is normal. Okay. Uh, if the grid uh, acts normally, the battery will not discharge. They will only charge to make sure 
the battery is always fully charged if the grid is, no, is normal. And if the grid fails it, uh, during the grid outage, then the battery will be used to discharge to support the loads. Okay. So this is another option, two options, okay, two basic options for uh, battery power reservation. And another thing is uh, uh, we call it economic modes. Economic mode, you can say it, uh, you can say different charge or discharge time and power of the battery. Okay, so this is uh, a totally hundred percent self-defined charging discharge of the battery. Okay, and in this option, you have four different options. You, it means uh, these four options. The these four options uh, in each option, you can set different charge charge or discharge logic. So it means, for example, in this, uh, in this option, you, you, you set power um, uh, Monday and a Tuesday, you want to charge the power, uh, charge the battery uh, from, uh, for example, 10 kilowatt to 10, 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock. And from the second logic, you can choose uh, a Wednesday and a Thursday uh, to discharge the battery. Okay, the, all these four logics is uh, separately, all the four logics is separately, okay. So you have uh, more options to do, to set different charge or discharge uh, logics of the battery. Okay, when you said you can set charge time and uh, uh, when to finish charge, when stop charge time. And also you can set the power, uh, the max, max charge power of, uh, for the battery. Okay. <clears throat> So this is a very flexible uh, settings for uh, any solar systems. Okay. And uh, this solution, we call it uh, consumption monitoring or load monitoring. Load monitoring actually is a default function about any solar inverters. Okay. Like uh, I think you guys are, still remember in the first pages, in the, in, in the previous pages, we have talked for all our hybrid inverters and AC retrofit inverters. We have uh, a components of course, smart meter. Okay, the smart meter, they can detect, they can detect the power from the grid and uh, the power export the grid. And uh, the inverter, they can detect PV production, they can detect a, a battery charge or discharge production, uh, discharge or charge power. So based on all this basic uh, uh, information, we can calculate how much load consumption it is, real time uh, load, load consumption, okay. <clears throat> So this is how it realized uh, load, load monitoring or consumption monitoring It's all realized by smart meter. So this is also another reason why smart meter is uh, compulsively needed for any storage motors, any storage systems, okay. And uh, in the uh, load monitoring, we have different levels of uh, monitoring. The first level is real-time monitoring. Real-time, it means they have a, we, will, we will create a diagram uh, to uh, show you the real-time load consumption of your house of different time, okay, of each 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 minute, okay, <clears throat> because the uploading uh, frequency is five minutes, so uh, the frequency of the load consumption is also five five uh, minutes. Another level is we have a simple calculation. Simple calculation is accumulated calculation about monthly or yearly or weekly. Uh, sorry, not weekly, it's um, uh, a daily, monthly, or yearly uh, accumulation, how much uh, uh, your loads consumed from, from, from the battery, from the solar systems, and uh, how much PV power is used for, this, for, for, for the uh, loads. Okay. And the third, <coughs> the third part, it's not just a, a simple calculation. You also have uh, some uh, a simple analysis. The analysis is just uh, to um, it's also a calculation, uh, just a, a kind of calculation to show you the self use ratio of uh, your energy storage systems. You know, it means how much power from solar is used uh, for battery uh, to charge a battery, and how much uh, solar power uh, is used to support loads, and how much power is buy from the grains, like that. So uh, depending on all the monitoring uh, calculations, you can have a, a general idea uh, to, to, to say if your uh, solar systems is uh, the best for your house consumption. Okay, depending on this, all the information, so you can 
uh, have uh, you know uh, suggestions. Uh, if you need to update your solar systems uh, to to give suggestions about the, uh, the best option for 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 your house. <coughs> Okay, this, this uh, part is some features about the motor, about our motors. Okay. Uh, the first, we call it a one-stop solution. Like in the first page I have talked, all the motors, we have attached um, a, a component, uh, smart meter, and also Wi-Fi module is also in touch uh, in, in, in the attachment box. <clears throat> so it means in, uh, if you received the motor, then you will have all the, you, you already have uh, all the necessary uh, components you needed for the energy storage systems. Okay, you don't have to buy, uh, buy other components separately, normally like, normally like that. So uh, you don't have to worry about it if you, if you miss something in the, in the, in the, in the system. Okay. And also in the, uh, all the inverters we have attached on the inverter two cables. One is the BMS uh, battery communication cable, and another is the smart meter communication cable. So uh, these two cables for smart meter is uh, 10 meters, and for battery it's uh, three meters. Okay. So normally the length of the cable is enough because normally the battery it, and the motor is connected together, right? So uh, uh, these two cables will save a lot of uh, time for installation because what you should do is just connect the battery to the uh, uh, target port, to target the uh, interface of the battery or, or of the smart meter. You don't have to worry, I made the cable wrong or something, you miss, uh, you miss uh, uh, really the cable or something. You don't have to worry about that. Okay. Because the, 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 the cable before we send out, so we have tested in a factory. So everything is fine. You just use it to, uh, for, the, uh, for the target uh, interface of the, on the battery or on the smart meter, that's, that's enough. And uh, this one, the uh, Bluetooth module, in the future, in short future, I think in a few months, uh, we, will, we will attach all the um, inverters with uh, Bluetooth modules. This Bluetooth modules is, uh, uh, communicates to communicate with, uh, with the, uh, our uh, application, PV Master, which is used for any storage solution and commissioning. So uh, with the, this solution, with the, this uh, module, uh, you can connect this module to the inverter and uh, you can connect uh, uh, your smartphones with, with the inverter by Bluetooth. Uh, so why we use this? Because all the inverters have, smart, uh, have uh, Wi-Fi modules, right? If the Wi-Fi module connected is, we can use uh, the smartphones connected to Wi-Fi signals and also we can do the commissioning. But sometimes uh, for a lot of, re a lot of reasons, Unexpected conditions, the, the Wi-Fi signals may be not stable, and in some, in some, uh, for some uh, smartphones like uh, a lot of Android phones, if you connect, uh, if you connect uh, Wi-Fi signals, if this Wi-Fi signal cannot cannot reach uh, a network, then the smartphones will disconnect these signals after a few minutes. So this is not stable for for uh, sometimes for uh, for Wi-Fi modules. Uh, to do the commissioning. So that's why we have uh, uh, used uh, a Bluetooth module, just uh, in case in some, in, in some situation, the Wi-Fi signal is not stable for, for the commissioning, right? Okay, and uh, this one, this uh, uh, component is not for all inverters because this uh, uh, components is only for ET paralleling. This connectors, we call it a Y connector or splitter. This is, this is used uh, to die chain all the uh, communication ports of uh, ET motors and then communicate it to the uh, uh, control box of, uh, uh, we call it SE7000S. Okay. So this component is not with the motor. This component with, uh, is uh, attached with the control box SE7000. If you want to, to do uh, ET paralleling, you need to buy that box. And in the box, we, will we have attached uh, uh, five pieces of these connectors inside. Okay, normally it's enough. So if you want more, you can purchase from Goodwe uh, separately. <clears throat> okay, another feature is uh, what do we call UPS label switch time. UPS, UPS label switch time, we have talked in the previous pages, it means uh, 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 if the grid shut down suddenly, 
and uh, you have some uh, important loads connected on the backup side. Um, the UPS level switch time is from on-grid to off-grid condition, just to, it's, 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 it's to make sure on the backup, backup side, uh, the power supply is not interrupt, interrupted. So normally for uh, most of the house loads, most, most, most of the house loads, in 10 milliseconds, in switch, switch, switch time is 10 milliseconds. It's less than uh, 10 milliseconds. So for most of the house uh, uh, loads, 10 milliseconds of switch is enough, okay? Because all the loads, almost all the loads can, uh, can uh, stand, uh, can stand uh, 10 milliseconds uh, switch, okay? So it means the power supply for the loads on the backup side will not uh, interrupt it. This is another feature. And this is a very important feature, actually. We have compared with other, compo other brands, uh, other uh, competitors um, it, in China brands or European brands, not so many, actually, just a few brands, they have this, uh, they have this uh, uh, function, they have these solutions. 10 milliseconds is very important for, uh, for the markets, especially the place where the uh, grid power is not stable. Sometimes you shut down, right? And uh, in some place, uh, you have some uh, very important, very important uh, loads. You don't have, you don't want to interrupt the power supply. Like uh, in your house, you can have a computer, right? If a computer, uh, the power, the, the the power from the grid shut shut down. Normally, if you don't have uh, UPS level switch switch uh, UPS UPS level solution then the power supply of the computer will shut down. Then the, 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 the inverter, the, the, the computer will shut down. Okay. So with uh, UPS level, uh, switch time is very important for a place with uh, important loads and some, some place uh, the um, uh, grid is not stable. Okay, and another feature, uh, it's not a kind of feature actually, this is just uh, um, uh, estimation about uh, about the installation time of could uh, be energy storage in motors. Okay, here we take uh, uh, the example of hybrids. Okay, actually we have uh, uh, calculated the time, estimated the time because we have uh, uh, practiced the installation in our factory. Okay, we just we have uh, uh, um, our very uh, experienced technical guys to do the installation about each part and then we, a few times, okay, repeat the installation, then we calculate the time about the installation. So how long for the installation of the whole systems, right? And normally it's uh, around, around half an hour, you can finish all the cables or the communication, including Wi-Fi communication and uh, the system commissioning, you can finish all. Of course, if, you, if, you are, if your installation, um, uh, installation place is a complicates, it's another, it's, 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 it's another way, okay, if you take a long time. But uh, uh, this, this calculation estimation, it means we find the place, we find the uh, 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 installation way uh, with the, all the connectors uh, finished, you know, all the connectors finished and there's no interruption uh, during the installations and uh, everything goes fine, goes fine. But, uh, you know, like I said, this is a one-stop solution. You have all the components and we have attached cables, uh, attached uh, uh, the communication cables. Um, and also in the short future, we will use a Wi-Fi module uh, with the USB, USB ports. It means the plug and play ports. You don't have to scroll, uh, you have to scroll on the, 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 the modules. They also save a lot of time. So in the future, the installation time will be, sh will be shorter, maybe will, will, will be shorter. So this is very good in some place. Um, I think in all the places is very important because save your time, right? But uh, especially, especially in some place, if the uh, human uh, cost, the labor cost is high, it's very important, right? You can say, compare with other energy storage system, you can save each system, you can save at least 10 minutes to do the installation, okay. And this feature is about unbalanced outputs. Unbalanced outputs, like I said, it's, uh, it means 
for these three phase outputs, you can have different uh, outputs from each phase from the motor, okay, on each phase from the motor. Okay, so the unbalanced output function is only for three phase hybrid motors, only for three phase hybrid motors. So it means uh, like, uh, um, you know, on the three phases, you connect different loads, okay, here, like here. On phase one, you connected uh, one kilowatt, and phase two, three kilowatts, phase three, two kilowatts. But if the inverter, they produce balanced, okay, they cannot, if the inverter cannot support and balance output, it means on each phase, okay, on each phase, they have to uh, produce the same power, right? So, but on the three phases, the load consumption is different. Load consumption power is different. Right. So, on uh, for example, like this condition, on first on first two, maybe, okay, you have uh, uh, three kilowatts uh, outputs. It's okay on first two, yeah, because the load power is three uh, three three kilowatts. On first three, uh, you have to you have to produce three kilowatts if you if it does not support unbalanced output because the three phase have to output the same, right? Just for example, the inverters produce the, uh, uh, ten, uh, nine kilowatts and uh, on each phase it's three kilowatts. Then the phase one and phase three, they have export power to grid, right? But in some place, say if you still it needs export power limit, like a zero export function. It, mean, it means the solar power production does not allow it to export to grid. And in this condition, you have to limit the production of the motor. Okay, so in this condition, if the inverter still have a balanced output, it means uh, they cannot export three kilowatts on each phase. Okay, they have to export one kilowatt on each phase. Because if they uh, produced more than one kilowatt on each phase, then on phase one, they have, a, they have a power export grid. Right, because on phase one they have only one kilowatt in, uh, loads, right? Okay, so this, this function is realized only on three phase ET or ET hybrid motors, and also BT. BT also have this function because all three phase. And uh, another uh, function is uh, only for BT. We call it unbalanced charge. Because BT, like I said, they have B inside it. It's AC retrofit. This is the AC retrofitting motor. They have to use with on grid systems. Okay, if if uh, if BT motor is used with a three phase on grid system, it means <clears throat> the solar power from the on grid systems, the production can charge the battery, right? If the inverter can support and balance charge, it means that on each phase after load consumption, the each phase to inverter to charge the battery could be different. Okay, so this also save a lot of time. So if, if the inverter cannot support and balance charge, it means on each phase, they have to, uh, they can only charge the battery 1.5, they have to follow the lowest power, lowest power. Then the rest power on phase one and on phase three is wasted. Okay, the power will be, will be limited, will be uh, compressed on the, on, on the uh, so, uh, solar normal PV motor side. Okay, and also the imbalance up to both function is uh, not only for single PC motors, they're also for ET paralleling functions. For multi PC uh, ET motors, if you do the paralleling uh, in the same system, the whole system can also realize imbalance outputs. Okay. <clears throat> And this function, like, like I said here, it's uh, on both backup and on grid sides. On grid side is optional. On grid side, you can choose to activate this function or to deactivate this function. But on, um, on the backup side is default. You cannot uh, deactivate it. It's always there. Because normally, you know, uh, on the on grid side, you can sometimes you don't have to use this uh, function because it, of course, this is complicated. This, this is depends on the country regulations of okay, different countries. They have different limitations. Okay, but uh, a lot of countries and more and more countries they need uh, unbalanced outputs, right? So in some places you don't have to need the, you don't need this function. 
just leave leave there. So if you need the function, you just use the our application to activate this function, then this uh, everything fine. And uh, another feature about this function is uh, we call it the 100% unbalanced output. 100% unbalanced output. What it means? It means on each phase, okay. They can produce from one kilowatt, one ki uh, from zero kilowatts to thirty percent, thirty-three percent of the nominal of the inverter. Okay, together. Uh, so, uh, just example for the inverter. For this inverter, it's ten kilowatts, and uh, and uh, in the real condition, the inverter can produce nine kilowatts. Okay, the solar can produce nine kilowatts, and uh, on each on each uh, phase, they connect different solars, uh, different loads. For example, on, on phase one, they do not connect, they do not connect uh, uh, loads. And on phase two, phase three, or phase three, they connect 3.3 kilowatts. So then it means uh, at the same time, uh, on phase one, they, can, they produce zero. On, on phase three, they can, connect, they can produce max 3.3 kilowatts. So this is a, what it called 100%. 100% emits from zero to 30%, 33% of the uh, nom of the inverter nominal output power. Okay. Okay. About this one, we have we also have a, a detailed technical document to talk about uh, unbalanced functions. So if you're in interested, you can connect contact uh, Goodwill Solar Academy to uh, get more information, more detailed information about uh, the logics about uh, everything. Also about the uh, paralleling functions. We also have document, technical document, document to talk about this. You can contact us to uh, get this document. And this part is about uh, the compatible batteries. Uh, like I said, our inverters uh, is compatible. Uh, we have options. Some inverters is compatible with low voltage battery, and some inverters are compatible with high voltage battery, like uh, uh, ESEM. Uh, SVP is used uh, low voltage battery. It means 48 volts of the battery voltage. And another uh, ET, BT, and EH, they use high voltage battery. Okay, for low voltage battery or high voltage battery, it's uh, what it means is only for lithium battery. Here I just uh, stress here again, lithium battery only. Uh, latest battery is uh, uh, not compatible. You know, we are not uh, recommended to connect the little asset batteries with our inverters because we have a, a lot of experience about uh, on uh, little battery, little asset batteries. It will cause a lot of our sales uh, problems and uh, uh, human, uh, human, human, human resource. Okay, for low voltage battery, uh, we are for now we are, are compatible, and you can choose directly on our application. P Master uh, is B, uh, BYD batteries. We are compatible. Uh, LG, Alpha, uh, Palantac, and Dynes. All the batteries here listed is compatible with our low voltage uh, and storage motor. And of course, for the batteries, we, uh, for each batteries, they have. Very, uh, very, very um, they have a lot. They have a lot model, models, different models. Like uh, for uh, uh, for uh, Palantac, they have US uh, two thousand. They have US three thousand. They also have other low voltage batteries. Okay, it's coming out. Uh, we can say we compatible with uh, most of the battery models, but not all. Okay, for the details, you can uh, download our PM Master. To check, we because in, in the PV Master application, <clears throat> uh, we have listed all the detailed uh, battery models about each brand. Okay, you can find all the details here, or you can download the compatible battery uh, uh, statement. We have a statement about the compatible batteries on our web website, Goodwill website. So you can download the documents from the website. And uh, the HV battery, high voltage battery, uh, for now we compatible is BYD, Palantac, and Dynes, and LG. LG Chem, uh, LG Chem is now it, it is in testing, it's not ready yet. And for BYD, uh, the picture here is the, the previous uh, high voltage battery, we call it uh, B Box HV. And uh, for now, we also compatible with HVM. 
HVM is the uh, new battery from uh, uh, new high voltage battery from uh, BYD. We are already compatible, and uh, for now we have a we already have a lot of uh, uh, projects is uh, used with HVM now. And for Palantec, it's doing tests, but um, you know uh, it's it's already uh, uh, fine. I think it's it's okay. You can use that. But uh, PowerCube is uh, also the previous version of, uh, of uh, Palantec high voltage batteries. And the new high voltage battery of Palantec is called, is called uh, Force H1, Force H2, uh, Force H1 and H2. And what we are testing is uh, Force H2. It's all, almost finished and in the short future, we will also uh, compatible. And uh, lithium uh, uh, LG came battery, high voltage battery, we are still in testing, and uh, uh, um, it's almost almost finished. At the, I will, I will update, we will update the compatible uh, status um, in our compatible battery compatible uh, statements, uh, like the documents you, you, I said you can download from our website. Okay, and uh, this one, Dennis, is al already finished. Okay, Dennis, uh, for all this uh, high uh, high volts high voltage uh, uh, batteries. Uh, for BYD, Palantec, and Dynis, okay, this is you use the same, same tower, battery tower, and you can extend the power uh, because it's, uh, uh, it's uh, um, how to say, it's made by uh, modularized, modularized uh, design. You can add or, uh, add or decrease uh, any of the modules from the battery. <clears throat> okay, so this is the battery where we, have, where we talked and uh, sometimes uh, also have customers want to, to test RV motors with other um, lithium batteries. It's not listed here. Uh, maybe your local lithium batteries brand, you wanted to do the compatibility with our motors and uh, you want to use that battery. Then before you do the compatibility or you do the testing, please contact Gujui. Okay, just... Uh, just in case we, we, it's better to tell us uh, the detailed information about the battery, then we can give you some suggestions if it's possible, if it's uh, good to use the battery or not. And uh, you need also the BMS communi uh, communication protocol from, uh, from us, right? So if you want to use the third parts, um, other batteries, yeah, contact the goods first. Okay. And uh, this part is about uh, uh, these two pages. Okay, this page is uh, about uh, the um, uh, external communication protocol for our any storage motors, actually. Because here they can communicate with, uh, with uh, other controllers or other units to realize a uh, microgrid system or to realize VPP uh, systems, solutions. Okay, so for our motors, our any storage motors, so for now we are compatible with uh, uh, Modbus RTU protocol, and uh, in short future, we will be compatible with Modbus TCP. And what we are what we are doing now is uh, also some spec protect, uh, protocol. So in the uh, future, we will be compatible with uh, both uh, Modbus RTU and TCP, and also some spec. Okay. Then you can use that to communicate with other other device to uh, to form your own systems like uh, a VPP or microgrid. <clears throat> okay, so this is uh, what we talked about uh, the uh, energy storage model of Goodry systems. So if you guys have any questions, you can contact Goodry for more de details, technical information. Okay. Thanks a lot for uh, Jack's uh, sharing. I think it is a great speech and a great presentation. I guess you all have much information and have learned something new and very helpful to your uh, career and in your application and practice in the field. Uh, next, I'm going to uh, play a video about the remote configuration function. Uh, for the energy storage uh, plans on SAMS portal app. Hello, I'm Simone from Goodway Sonar Academy. Welcome to SAMS portal app. There is a great function for energy storage plant which enables us 
to change configuration without visiting the project site. We call it remote configuration. To use remote configuration, two conditions have to be met. One is that our energy storage plant is a registered plant on SAMS portal, and the other is that the inverter is online. Here we go. The inverter in this PV plant is generating, and communication is OK. Only normal communication status can make sure that our modification to the original parameter setting would come into effect. Remote configuration is on device monitoring page. We click to get started. Good way disclaimer, make sure you've read this and understood the potential risks to the normal operation of this plant. If we'd like to move on, click I agree with the above conditions and click next. Here we come to remote configuration page officially. Look, there are four sections, safety for safety country selection, battery to change parameters related to the battery, mode for system operation mode selection and others for backup supply, shadow scan function and battery activation. Let's start with safety section. As we can see, current safety code is Philippines and we can change it into another one by select and save. Battery section, we can select battery model, capacity, and other parameters. The battery brand list is in compliance with the compatible battery options for Goodway Inverter. It automatically detects and displays available battery brand and model options. DoD on grid and off grid setting is also available. Operation Mode section, there are four basic work modes we can select for our PV system. General Mode, Backup Mode, Off-Grid Mode, and Economic Mode. To enable Economic Mode, we should first turn it on and add the basic parameters such as charge or discharge time. To set export power limit to the grid, we can turn on the button on grid power limit, and then enter a value of maximum on grid output power. If zero export power is required, we can just enter zero. Power factor is also available to change. More advanced settings are included in others section. Backup supply, shadow scan, and battery activation functions. Remote configuration is authorized to organization users and SAMS app should be upgraded to the latest version, V2.35. Do you have fun with remote configuration? Start with SAMS portal app and discover more. Do you have any question after watching this video? Welcome to comment here or contact Goodway directly. See you next time. Thanks a lot for for Jack's presentation, and now we have invited our next speaker, uh, the application engineer from Goodway Sona Academy, uh, Craig. Craig, uh, I see he has bring some new product with him. I think uh, that would be a puzzle for you to discover during his presentation. Greg, it is your time. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you for your introduction. So I'm Craig from Goodwill Solar Academy. Uh, so today, the last uh, topic will be about our residential solution. So let's just begin. And uh, okay, so, um, so first one, uh, this page will be uh, sorry, <laughs> I forgot to share my screen. Wait a minute. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah. Okay. So, so the first page will be a um, brief introduction about our um, 
the four major parts of our residential solutions. The first one would be definitely the inverters. So here on um, all the inverters, we have um, capacity region from three kilo, uh, three, sorry, 700 kilowatt up to right now should be um, uh, 25 kilowatt right now. And we have uh, inverters from single phase and three phase with different number of MPBT. So here we've already been awarded for um, the uh, EUPD research for the top brand PV. And uh, uh, we've already achieved this award for two years right now, or oh, three years, <laughs> sorry, four years right now. Uh, today, this year, 2000, 2020, we also uh, achieved this one. And uh, this award is actually awarded by the, um, by the main markets. Right now, the main markets like Australia New and uh, Netherlands. So it, it, is, it can be treated as approval of our um, um, brand or the inverter's quality. So this is about inverter. So second, it will be the optimizer part. So basically you are familiar with the MPPT technology of our on-green inverters. So basically, for example, um, uh, most of the residential inverters will have two MPPT, but um, with the uh, optimizer solution um, added into the whole solution, so basically, you can realize a modulized uh, um, uh, op optimization, um, module level op optimization of the of the whole system. So uh, right now we have a, a decent cooperation with Tygo. Okay, so Tygo is a uh, is a is a is a company from the uh, Silicon Valley, uh, from the United States. So we have uh, um, both um, uh, hardware and uh, software um, uh, integration with Tygo's products. So I will, uh, later I will introduce in detail. So next part will be the energy storage one. So the energy storage, you just heard about the uh, detail, the introduction about our energy storage solution. So uh, um, uh, what I want to uh, em emphasize here is that we, apart from those hybrid inverters, we also have the AC couple solution. So together with the uh, angry inverters, you can realize uh, energy storage um, um, purpose or um, a function as well. Uh, so the last part is also something we've already uh, went through uh, yesterday is about the SEMS, it's about the monitoring solution. So uh, later I will, uh, in some slides, I will introduce the, um, uh, the, the features or the monitoring functions, especially for the residential one. So uh, let's begin the features. Uh, I will first I'll introduce some considerable features of our residential solutions. So the first one, uh, apart from introducing the performance or the um, uh, the uh, efficiency, uh, first of all, I want to introduce the, the um, design. Okay, the, the techniques or tech, the techniques or design appearance. Okay, so uh, first, um, uh, it's about the appearance. So basically, the the techniques for the residential solutions, uh, for the residential emitters we use are called the die casting um, uh, molding techniques. Okay, and uh, this, this solution I will show you um, in detail about using a uh, emitter, real emitter here. Uh, okay, so. Um, uh, so this is, uh, sorry. This is an access, okay? So later I will just show you the access. So this is access and uh, it's pretty small. And uh, what is die casting molding techniques? So, okay, so um, uh, you can see that both the covers and the, and the case here, what's in there? The case here are called um, are using uh, molding, die casting molding, which means that it, it is, um, how to say, one in home molding. It is not like some, um, some uh, covers made of, of uh, metal sheets using some um, other techniques. So it's uh, relatively more reliable than uh, our um, other brands or other models. And the one, Im one important thing is that also the case is made of die casting molding, uh, which means the heat dissipation part and the, the case, um, uh, including um, all the components. This case is actually, uh, uh, um, um, how to say, it's a one in whole case, okay? So basically, if you check other brands, 
the heat dissipation plates and uh, the, the, the case or the cabinet is actually um, installed or sticked together. Okay, so it's quite different. And uh, with a die casting molding techniques, uh, all the um, edges all the, uh, are, are dealt uh, with quite smooth, smoothly. Okay, there's no edges, it will not hurt you. It will not cut you, even for the installers or for the clients. You, you are not, um, it's very safe for you to use it and to touch it or to handle it. Okay, so it's a die casting uh, molding. Uh, okay, so let's, let's continue. So uh, also, you, you just already saw the, uh, the appearance. So it's um, uh, basically we, we, we provide two colors. Two colors. One is red, another is um, uh, another is white. So is these colors are all perfect. Uh, they are beautiful for the um, for the uh, installation in your house. Okay. And uh, here we also have uh, we've been uh, we have um, achieved this red dot design award for our DNS a uh, DSS series as well. So uh, this part is about the extreme uh, compact design. So uh, just now you've already seen the real unit of the access. So it's pretty small. The, the size of the cover is about like, um, as many like A4 paper. Okay, so it's quite small. And uh, you know that the, 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 the capacity of this XS series ranges from um, 300, kilo, uh, 300 watt up to uh, 700 watt up to three kilowatt. That means um, you can have uh, this compact on green motor um, uh, uh, with the installation up to up to three kilowatt. Okay, so it's quite small, quite convenient, not only for the installer but also for the um, logistics part, right? Because for installer you can handle that, you can um, um, transport, uh, uh, you, can, you can you can you can deliver this inverter to the households uh, house owners easily, right? And uh, also for the um, distribution uh, distributors, so when you actually um, uh, when you purchase these inverters, you can actually ship more um, amount or more quantity than, than the similar brand, right? You can save some logistics fee as well. So it's a, we call it compact, extreme compact design. And uh, uh, another thing is a screen, so. Uh, basically, we, when we start manufacturing or designing uh, on-green motors uh, at the beginning, uh, we, 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 we already um, provide a screens for all the motors. And this is kind of a habit of GUI because we think the screen is very important for the um, for inverters because uh, although uh, almost all all all, all, all uh, uh, all of you have the smartphone, right? And uh, you can install apps, you can use uh, the apps to do the commissioning or something. That's what other people do. But uh, for our emitters, also we have the apps, smart apps uh, as an option. But um, uh, we think it's more important for everyone um, to use the, uh, use the um, screen to do the basic local monitoring, to do the basic commissioning, and then which would be uh, much uh, much more easier for some um, uh, aged people or some some um, uh, people who are not familiar with their uh, the operations on this on smartphones. So basically, that's what we provide. And you can see here, no matter it's no matter uh, uh, what, what no matter what size it is, we we also provide different um, provide screens for different uh, inverters. Some of the screens are small because we have um, limited space, but still we prov we put a screen on it, so you can use a screen to do the basic log monitoring and the configuration. And with uh, in, uh, for the inverters with bigger screen, there will be more um, uh, data type you can access. So, for example, for the SDT series, basically you can you can check like uh, the blocks of the generation or curves in generation, and you can um, uh, basically this screen will be divided in different sectors to display different um, data. 
So that's what we do. And uh, I'm sure that we will keep um, providing uh, good, good uh, screens for the clients. And uh, for example, for the DSS, that's what we, we've already uh, improved. We, pro we provide a color screen uh, with uh, LED uh, lights. So basically, we, we are also put more efforts on improve, improvement of the screen. So this is about the, um, uh, we, we, I call it a smart state, but this basically about the um, multifunction uh, communication modules. So communication modules you are familiar with, uh, the Wi-Fi or the uh, GPIS module, that's, that's what we already have on most of the applications. But uh, here we have the first one is Wi-Fi plus LAN. So um, Wi-Fi plus LAN, how, how does it work? Or how, what, what kind of problem it can solve? So uh, right now, um, I think the, the key point of this one is that um, you can, for the, especially for installers, you don't need to consider, uh, consider what kind of uh, network situation uh, is, uh, it, it is in, in your uh, installer, uh, in, in your uh, <coughs> client's uh, home. So because you don't, you, you, you don't need to think about, uh, is there any um, signal uh, blocks by the walls or by the floors? Something like that. You can you can uh, flexibly choose uh, choose um, the Wi-Fi or uh, the, you want to use Wi-Fi or LAN at your site. So that's that's more convenient, right? So maybe at your site, if it is blocked by a lot of walls or floors, you can just use a LAN cable to directly connect it to the router, right? So that's um, basically um, what, why we develop Wi-Fi plus LAN module. We just give you more choices on that. Another thing, another module here is the Bluetooth module, and I think um, uh, both Simon and uh, Jack have already introduced uh, something about this one. So, in the uh, residential application, so basically the Bluetooth module is used for just for fast commissioning. Okay, so uh, if, for example, if I'm an installer, so in in the future I can bring um, a Bluetooth module together with me as a tour for quick. Commissioning. Okay, so when I complete the wiring of the inverters, I can just simply plug the um, uh, plug the uh, Bluetooth module into the inverter and use a smart app to do a quick, uh, very quick commissioning. Okay, that's as for fast commissioning. So um, yeah, we also just like what I've introduced. We have a screen to do that, but uh, for some um, high efficient for in 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 order to um, achieve a higher efficiency, we can use Bluetooth module to do the commissioning as well. So the next one is um, the 4G module here. So compared with the GPIS 2G module, definitely the speed will be fast, will be faster. And um, also it can, can be the compatibility with the local uh, communication, com, uh, communication carrier will be, um, will be more, will be better for sure because you, um, it is the technology, the 4G technology don't requires too much on the compatibility and also maybe the bandwidth or on the, um, uh, some technology part will don't have too much restriction uh, compared with the 2G uh, communication. So the 4G will be, um, I think will be a good, much, much, or a much, much better um, uh, option for some uh, places without the uh, ethernet connection, right? So this is 2G module. So this is basically some uh, uh, instruction about the current or the available um, new modules, communication, communication modules we offered for the residential solution. So this part we've just introduced about the Bluetooth module. So this is an, a, the app, the software um, uh, use the partner for the Bluetooth module. So this is we call SoloGo. And uh, SoloGo, um, uh, together with the Bluetooth can realize a quick commissioning. So this, this you can see on this page, there are only four, three steps to uh, make the inverter works. Okay, to make, make the inverter work. Um, uh, so first will be use your smartphone to uh, in your Wi-Fi settings to, to search and find and then connect this inverters installed with the Bluetooth module. Then go back to the solo goal. You can, you can find the device, click, Click that device. You can you can do the settings, and there are only two settings you need to uh, to do you need to configure. The first one will be the time settings, 
and next one will be the safety settings or the grid connection parameters. So basically, you can, you can choose the country code in this um, uh, safety uh, option. For example, you can choose uh, Sri Lanka or uh, 50 hertz or, or uh, 60 hertz default based on the, the uh, based on your local requirement or the local grid you, you are connecting to. Then the next one will, you, will be choose the grid connection. Basically, it's about the grid type you're, you're currently connecting to. So uh, normally we will choose like uh, uh, the, um, uh, uh, how to say, the, the star type. And also we, we, can, we can provide um, we, uh, a delta type is also available in, uh, in, our, in some of the inverters. So with this uh, three uh, uh, steps completed, you can, you, the inverters will start working immediately. So uh, in the SolarGo app, apart from the commissioning part, also we have uh, different sectors uh, with different functions. So the first one will be the running date. So uh, when you go to the after commissioning, when you go to this main, main page, we call it overview page. So you can check the status here, whether it is working normal or it is um, awaiting or something. So we have different status for the inverters. And also we have the serial number for this single emitter and uh, also a diagram showing the connection, the power flow um, among different sources, among the, P, among the PV, among the uh, emitter, uh, among PV emitter and, uh, and the grid. And uh, apart from that, you can, you can check the generation, the total generation, E-day and the uh, E-total. Okay, so, the H, so this is some very, very brief introduction, uh, information about the uh, running date. So if you want to check about the uh, detailed date, you can go to the parameters page here. So on the parameters page, you can check the overall um, uh, op operating data of the DC side and AC side. Okay, so like, for example, you can check the string voltage, string current, and also you can check the uh, grid voltage and grid current. Um, so that's basically the detailed parameters. So you can check the running data here on using uh, SolarGo. So that's a basic function about the local monitoring we, um, we developed on the solar goal for the users. So um, if anything, ha anything happened to the murders, so the alarms will be shown uh, in the uh, solar goal. So basically you can go to the parameters page. There will be a long uh, tab, click on the tab. You can find the, the, uh, the current fault uh, occurred to the murder. So you can see this is a VAC failure. You can see what, when this uh, failure happened in the uh, error code. So when you click this failure or this, um, this error, on next page, you can check the details of this fault. For example, you can, uh, you can find the, the, the error code, you can find a description of this uh, problem and together with a brief in, uh, solution for this problem. Okay, and uh, with the with the error code, with the serial number, if it is if it if this problem could not be solved by yourself or by the installer, you can turn to us. Okay, so you can contact our local or international uh, sales team for a further solution. Okay, so that's about alarms. So next one is something uh, I really like. It's called firmware update. Okay, so with this function, you can uh, the installers or the um, maintainers team they can use the app to up upgrade the firmware of the inverters. So basically, um, uh, when we need to, uh, there are two situations that we need to update the firmware. First one will be, um, there's something, um, some uh, um, uh, bugs fixed on, uh, on the firmware, so we need to, up definitely we need to update the firmware of the inverters. Another one will be that we, uh, uh, that we, we add some more functions, some new functions in for this inverters you're using. So basically we will provide this firmware um, for you to update the inverters, then you can enjoy the new functions. So that's the basic two scenarios we are, we, we need uh, to update the firmware. So uh, in the past, in, in the past actually, uh, for our sales, uh, for our inter after sales team, or for the uh, installers, if you need to update the firmware of the inverter, you need to, for example, you need to uncover some parts of the inverter at, at the bottom. 
and you need to use a laptop with a USB cable to connect it to the inverter and open some software, um, uh, some um, uh, compulsory software on your uh, laptop and the waiting um, when waiting for the firmware flashing. Um, and sometimes maybe the flashing process is not stable, you need to do it again and again. So it's a, it's an older way, we, we, the older way uh, of how, how we update the firmware. So with this function using SoloGo, that will be more and more, more and more convenient for um, both, of, both you and us. Okay, so that's a firmware update. Uh, the last part uh, is about the settings. Okay, so uh, although the emitter is working, right? So after commissioning, the emitter start to work, start to generate power to, to earn money for you. But uh, we also provide some uh, functions in the solo goal. So for example, you can, if you use a solo log and some third party data logger, you can set up um, uh, the mobile bus address for the emitter. And uh, if you have a, um, a uh, requirement for um, that you need in order to output reactive power to to compensate certain amount of um, a reactive power. You can adjust the PF factor. You can also you can directly set the reactive power um, percentage of the output, something like that. So, uh, but uh, what I what I want to men um, uh, mention is that uh, these functions sometimes are not necessary for you to. To, to, to activate. So basically, if you want to set up some, um, to activate part of these functions, you need to contact us for, uh, before you're doing that. Uh, the next part is about uh, the optimizer. Okay, so let's take a look. So here I use a house um, as a demonstration to explain how the optimizer uh, work works with together with good wing motors. So basically, this op, this covers with different colors are from Tygo. Okay, so Tygo they they have a, a series of optimizer products with different covers, and these different covers, different color of the covers represents different functions. Okay, so first one, let's take a look at the yellow ones. So yellow ones, they are actually they are the optimizers um, with the modulized uh, module level uh, monitoring function. So you can see that if we have, um, for, for example, in, in this picture, you can see that we have a, 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 a shadows or shades um, generated by the a, a closer, a nearby tree. So basically we can use the optimizer, this yellow one, then they will work independently to reduce influence on the voltage, uh, DC voltage drop. Okay, so, as what I've introduced, we have the MPVT technology for each of the murders, but um, MPVT um, and technology are only for MPVT level. Okay, so for example, if we don't have the optimizers here and these shadows are covering two strings, so basically the MPVT voltage will be will be forced to drop to the lowest one, low, uh, the lowest string. Okay. Uh, the lowest of voltage uh, among the strings, so that will influence definitely will influence the generation of the whole uh, of the inverters of the inverter. But uh, if we install the optimizer here, so each in each of optimizer they can reduce influence of the of the of the of the of the, of the module. Okay, so basically it was um, it will influence somehow it will influence the uh, it will improve. Or you increase the DC voltage compared with the uh, solution without the optimizers. Okay, so another one will be the blue cover. Um, sorry, you, you may not, you may not, uh, you may cannot see the color here, but it's it's a blue cover, and they are the um, uh, monitoring. Uh, we call it monitoring um, uh, uh, optimizers, or <laughs> so it's a little bit complicated, but it's, it's it has a basic module level monitoring function. <coughs> so uh, after, deploying, uh, after deploying this module, uh, uh, blue covers, you can realize module level monitoring uh, using your smart, uh, using our SEMS, okay? So compared with the basic string level monitoring, you can, uh, you can finally check uh, each panels or each module's performance. 
So apart from this, this two, we have, here we have two uh, with a white cover. So this is actually, they don't have these functions, but uh, the thing is that it's a basic diode junction box, like the junction box of the, of the panels you, 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 you buy or you purchase from distributors. So, but the difference is that uh, it's the structural design of this diode junction box is quite different from the traditional one. So it can, first it can be replaced. Okay, so for example, uh, uh, okay, so I just want to upgrade this to, um, to a basic diode a box to this um, uh, advanced uh, optimizers. So I, I can just basically uh, remove this one and install, install the yellow ones on them, okay? And uh, that's also the advantage, okay? So because uh, as, I just, I, as, I will, as I just introduced, basically you can remove this one. That means it is not installed or uh, fixed at the back of the uh, panels, okay? So the advantage or the, or the um, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the advantage of this diode junction box is that it, it will not generate heat di directly to the panel's uh, back, okay? So the uh, uh, reliability or um, the influence, the heat dissipation uh, problem will be much, much less than the traditional modules. Okay, so that's the basic diode junction box. So here on this page, um, I will just show you some uh, comparison between uh, ours, uh, going with Tiger Solution, um, and others. Okay, on the market. So first one would be um, um, it's a it's a solution from a Israel Israeli uh, company, uh, and uh, here you can see um, at uh, at the back of each panel or each module. Um, there is an optimizer, right? So that means it is a compil 100, com 100 um, compos compulsory deployment. And for the installers, uh, definitely you don't have choice, right? You need to install, all, uh, install optimizers for all the panels you're going to um, use if you want to make them work, okay? So that's, that's pretty... Um, uh, hard for the for the um, uh, it's it's a quite a it's a lot of money, right? Because for example, in this page, you can see that not only not all the panels in install on the rooftop are influenced by the shadows, so you cannot find the economical um, point of this investment, right? So that's that's I think we don't that's not friendly, <laughs> okay? And uh, so just what I've what I've demonstrated, and uh, you can see that we don't re require 100% deployment of the optimizers. So you can choose um, uh, choose on, on, on which panel you want to install um, and in optimizers. So basically, you can you can choose or you can design based on the um, real situation here. Okay, so that's more um, friendly and uh, uh, for the for the uh, users and. Uh, <clears throat> So let's take a look at this one. So uh, you can see that um, some of the companies on the market, they also claim that they are compatible with Tygo, but uh, if you take a close look, you can find that uh, their solution are actually two solutions, okay? So first one is like this. So basically it's a Tygo solution. You have the optimizers, you collect data on their TAP, you on the tap, and the data, the data will be transmitted to the CCA here, and the CCA will upload it, the data to the to their server, and you can you can use the Tigos app to do the monitoring. You can monitor the optimizers or the modules, module level um, uh, data, and rest of the rest of the part will be it's actually it's another one, another solution. So it's just basic inverter monitoring solution, right? You upload all the data of the inverters only to the to the inverters. Um, monitoring platform, and you actually need to have two apps or two monitoring portal to do the monitoring, right? And there is no interaction. But uh, for ours, uh, good with Plus Tiger solution, we have uh, integrated the CCA into all the inverters, or not all the inverters, in some models of our 
MNS. One is a DNS, another is an SDT. So basically all the data, the physical deliver, uh, delivery or transmission of the data will be through our emitters, okay? Then in our emitters, we will upload both the modules information and the emitters information to our SAMs. And you can monitor both of them on our platform. Okay, so it's, it's a, this is a real um, uh, uh, deep uh, cooperation or deep integration. Okay, so it's not like some others, others solution. So next part will be about the high compatibility with the smart home. So because smart home is, I think, probably is the most um, heating topic or heating solution we are talking about right now in the, in the PV industry. <clears throat> First one will be uh, uh, here, uh, it's about SAMS and Easy, Easy Designer. So SAMS you are quite familiar with because yesterday we, I think Simon has already uh, gave you, um, given, already gave, given you um, uh, a detailed introduction, okay? So, but uh, what I want to emphasize is that right now, this SAMS portal is actually offered to our clients for free, okay? So we don't have, we don't have this um, add-on function in, which requires you to pay additional money. We just offer the, all the functions for you, uh, to you for free. And we are also continuously adding more and more functions into that. Okay, so for example, like uh, uh, load monitoring or weather station, because we are trying to make that uh, SAMS portal catering to the um, trend, the main trend or mainstream functions or mainstream technologies in the market, but without charging uh, any um, more uh, money from you. So that's the SAMS, the free access for everyone. And another one uh, is a very interesting platform. We call it Easy Designer. So basically, because most of our residential uh, clients or uh, uh, most of the roles will be distributors, will be the small installers or medium installers. So basically, you, what you need to do for your clients first is to design the system. And on the market, you are familiar with the PV system, you're familiar with the PV soul. So these softwares actually will cost a lot of money, a lot, uh, cost you a lot of money every, every year, okay? So, so our easy designer is actually designed to help you to, uh, to uh, offer for you for free and to help you to design small scale system. Also, it can, it can, it can be used to design some big uh, project, but uh, basically I think it is more on, um, more on, um, uh, how to say, it's more uh, helpful for our uh, small, in, small clients or in, uh, installers. So basically you can just check out our easy designer. You can just register using your, Register just to use your email address. Then you can you can you can use it. And uh, apart from the design job, I think, uh, especially for some new newcomers of the industry of this PV industry, you can use it to as a as a tour or as an educational tour, to to help you to learn PV knowledge quickly, right? So it will just help you to 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 um get rid of some functions you are going to uh, meet during the real installations. So that's the purpose of this one. So later, I, I hope you can check, check, check this out on our page. Uh, so next one is, uh, is about the uh, real-time uh, uh, monitoring, low monitoring. So it's a real-time uh, power consumption uh, solution. We call it HomeKit solution. So with a HomeKit solution, basically you can, you can check uh, how much power you are generating, or you, you are consuming, uh, you consume every day, and uh, gradually you will, you will, how to say, you will, you will um, give an a, a idea, detailed idea about your um, power consumption habit. And uh, it can not only be used on, uh, on our inverters, but also can be used on, on other brands, okay? So uh, basically it's a small tour for the users to uh, to 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 raise a good habit uh, about uh, to raise a good um, uh, power consumption habit for the users, and uh, also I think in the near future this one can also predict predict the power consumption 
for the users. So this will, you know, um, to to um, give an insight about how much power you're going to use in in a week, uh, in, the, in a month, or even in, in a season. So this is one is perfect for the um, for the design of the energy storage capacity you're going to uh, consider to install. So so that's uh, that's a basic function about the uh, power uh, consumption monitoring. <coughs> So this is uh, compatibility of uh, compatible with TCP/IP protocol. So this one is actually some um, some uh, demand raised in some mainstream market. Uh, for example, Germ <coughs> the German German market, a uh, 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 German market. Yeah, and uh, in in these mainstream markets, so more and more, uh, 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 how to say, <coughs> residential appliance like aircon like uh, your uh, fridge like even the washing machine they are working they they are going they are, they are, they are already right now most some of them are already integrated with integrated with this um uh, communications okay so they will also they are on the markets uh, more and more some uh, software or smart or intellectual companies they are they they offer this called energy smart energy controller so with the energy controller, you <coughs> it is able to communicate with the appliance, okay? And the most popular uh, protocol will be the TCP IP protocol on the market. So right now we are going to be compatible with, with this protocol. And uh, in this market, the for example, if you have the EV charger, you have uh, the water heat and uh, some, for example, other uh, appliance. So with uh, as as also as we our emitters are also connected to the controller, uh, so we can join this power flow intellectual power flow uh, organization, and the uh, the power from the uh, from DC side from the uh, PV array will flow to to meet the power requirement among this network more intellectually. So that's basically the requirement. Uh, why we do that? Why we compat make our inventor be compatible with TCP IP protocol? Another one is another protocol. It's called Sunspire Modbus protocol. And uh, yeah, basically you can understand it's uh, customized the Modbus protocol, but uh, uh, the the wider concept or wider definition is this is actually a, a alliance, okay? So all the, uh, there are a lot of different companies. They are not just uh, solar inventor companies. They are also, some companies in, in uh, some advanced or uh, high tech companies in the world. So with by compatible, by fully compatible with Sunspire Motorbus Motorbus protocol, that means clients can 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 use these devices from different companies together. For example, like we our emitters can use with this brand, with this brand, using the using the uh, data logger compatible with the Sun Sunspire protocol. So it's like um, uh, alliance and uh, uh, clients using products from this alliance can can have uh, more um, intellectual um, control of these devices. It's quite similar like the TCP IP because uh, TCP IP is actually uh, the whole system or the whole network is controlled by the, uh, a smart power controller or energy controller. So this is what um, Sunspan Motorbus protocol. So this function uh, is is quite. Uh, I think most of them, most of you are familiar with this one. Uh, this is a power limit function because we there are more and more markets that are, they are also requiring this one because you know the FIT policy are gradually on uh, out of the uh, out of the market or and uh, you need to uh, you you are not allowed to feed the additional power back to the grid. So you can see it, whether if it is not allowed, so we can realize this one. Uh, we, are, we can realize this function uh, on our inverters. So uh, for example here, uh, because most of power will be used to power the loads. Uh, and uh, if the loads is, cannot be fully powered by the PV only, you can buy the electricity from the grid to power the uh, loads as well, but uh, still no power from, no additional power 
back to the grid. So that's the power limit function. And the different inverters uh, we, we, we offer have uh, different uh, functions with, uh, with some, uh, because we, we will need to use different accessories to realize this function in some cases. So next one will be the Q quality and safety part. So it's basically introduction about the Q and A part. <clears throat> so first one, uh, as, as you've already seen that this is uh, advanced fanless design, okay? So all the, all the inverters we, uh, all the re residential inverters, we don't have the fans installed on our inverters, okay? <clears throat> so, so that means, uh, that means you don't, the noise control will be much, much, much better than the inverters with fans. And also based on the advanced topology design, you don't need to worry about the heat, heat dissipation uh, uh, part, uh, 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 performance, okay? So with the natural cooling, it can, it, <clears throat> you, don't, you don't need to worry about that. It can work uh, perfectly uh, uh, with uh, temperature, um, I think the temperature less than uh, 45 degree or even 50 degree. So basically, you can install in your house without considering about the uh, temperature. <clears throat> Next part is about the SPD, uh, SPD integrated SPD. So right now we are we are trying to integrate the type two of not try. We already have this type two DC SPD in, integrated on our MS. Okay, so the the three uh, uh, MPD version. So basically, um. With this uh, SPD integrated on our inverters, in some countries, uh, in some countries you don't you don't have to uh, install the uh, string string box or the uh, DC combiner box, because uh, some of the countries they will require you to have this uh, DC SPD installed on uh, uh, externally if you don't have them on the inverters. So basically, that's uh, it, it. Somehow it can save some money for you if it is required uh, in your market. So on this slide, um, how we guarantee the pro uh, quality of the inverters? So on this slide, this is something we can, we can, um, we can make you um, believe that, okay? So these are the brands or the, uh, of the, of the key components we're using right now. For example, like IGBT, we use, uh, we use Infineon, okay? For the sensors, DC, DC current sensors, we use the sensors from LAM. For the capacitor, capacitors, uh, right now we have electrolyte uh, capacitors from, uh, and also the, uh, uh, some, some, some of the models we use the film capacitors. So they're from Farrah and uh, Panasonic. And for the ICs, uh, and we use from TI. Okay, so to guarantee the high speed um, process of the signals of the data. And also for the switches, we use um, MC from Germany, uh, uh, Stemball, and uh, Amphenol for sure. And for connectors, we use Senton. Okay, so these are the world, uh, world renowned um, brands um, uh, providing these key components for the mainstream uh, inverters. And that's what we are using right now on our inverters. Um, on this page, I says some tests. Uh, what uh, we, we, we do for the massive uh, produc production or manu manufacture, uh, manufacturing on um, models, okay? So this is called ATS test. This is a self-developed uh, developed, uh, test platform. Um, and uh, we use this test platform to, to do the uh, complete check of, of all the, all, Every single inverter we, we, we assemble or, or manufacture uh, in, in the facility here. So it's just trying to make sure that the inverter will, is 100% okay or good for before the delivery. Okay, so when you receive the inverters you purchased, in each of the box you will, you will have the ATS test uh, certificate indicating all the um, parameters or specifications of the single inverters of the single inverter. And this is the aging test we, and this is also 100% dead, uh, uh, dead by, uh, for every single inverter. So after the, uh, after we, after assembly, uh, all the inverters will be sent to this 
uh, high temperature a aging room. Also in this aging room, the temperature will be 45 degrees centigrade and each inverter will be put there and uh, with, uh, with a DC source, simulated DC source plug in and the inverter will be put here to simulate the, the high temperature, to simulate the uh, full load uh, work uh, under this, in this, under this high temperature for at least uh, eight hours. So this is, so because temperature is one of the key elements that will influence the lifespan, influence the performance of the inverter, solar inverter. So that's what we do for every single inverter, just trying to make sure they will work perfectly in this high temperature environment. <clears throat> so this one's about the VD reliability certificate. So this certificate is, um, uh, is I think I, I never heard of that some, any other uh, company sent the inverters to this, to do this test. So this one is actually, um, I think it's interesting um, for me. It's just quite interesting and I would like to share with you. So uh, in this test, we send our three kilowatt NS to this test. And uh, under this, uh, this, te this test will be done to check what? To check the lifespan, estimated lifespan of your inverter. So uh, on, after, after the test, we get a result here. So basically the, uh, the minimum calcul calculated uh, lifespan uh, working at a, a, a temperature higher or a, a higher than uh, 35 degrees centigrade and the lifespan is uh, equals to here, uh, 64,000 uh, hours, uh, 64,000 plus and 100 hours. And uh, based on my calculation, it equals to more than uh, almost 15 years. So, so basically you can understand that uh, if the temperature is less than, the temperature of the working environment is less than 35 degrees centigrade, the lifespan will be you know, much longer, maybe more than 15 years, I think. So that's significant, I think it's a very, very good um, uh, approval of the, of the reliability or the uh, lifespan of our, of Goodwill's re residential inverters. And uh, here and on this page, so actually I've introduced a lot of features and uh, advantages of our residential solutions. But uh, on this slide, so I will just give you a brief or general understanding about what we have or what we are offering to you. So you can see we have, uh, we have residential solutions for both single phase and the three phase. And uh, here, based on that, we also have inverters uh, with one, two, three MPPT, okay? And uh, also we have a wider range. We have the inverters ranging from seven watt up to 25 kilowatt. So basically we, we can cover most of the uh, residential requirement on the market. And uh, I think uh, definitely you can, you can choose the one catering to you or to your clients or to your uh, marketing strategy. Uh, from Goodwill's residential solution. Okay, so so thank you, thank you very much um, for your time, and uh, I hope you can learn uh, uh, some something you want to know about Goodwill's inverters. And uh, if you have any question, please feel free to contact us. You can you can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and you can contact us by send um, an email or message direct, directly to academy at goodwill.com. Okay. So thank you very much, uh, and uh, uh, I hope we can see each other again. Thank you. Um, thanks a lot for uh, Mr. Craig's sharing and his pre wonderful presentation. I believe you have uh, some questions or something you want to learn from Goodway. We have many channels to share TV knowledge and Goodway solutions to all of or customers or potential customers or anyone who are interested in PV solutions and products. Uh, you, may come, you may follow us at Facebook and, or on YouTube. All these videos are available on YouTube and please search, just search Goodway Sonar Academy or keywords Goodway. You may find more things interesting and funny. 
and very helpful to your future career or current application in the field. And and thanks, thanks, thanks for all and for, and thanks to our speakers, Jack. Uh, thanks to our speakers, two speakers, Jack and Craig, and uh, to. Uh, uh, we are very pleased to have you all in this webinar. And um, may we see in the future webinar? And thanks very much for your attending. Please uh, keep in touch. See you.